Hey guys, Joshua Peterson here with Peterson Electric. Um, I got a complaint. Uh, sounded really simple, uh, like a microwave issue. Lights were flickering. Um, 20 year old home. Came out, looked at the microwave circuit. 900 watts on the microwave. Should draw 7.5 amps at 122, 124 volts. I was drawing 12, 12 amps, uh, equivalent to um, probably 1200 watts, uh, maybe 1500 closer. Um, anyways, it's about a 35% increase of loss of power. If you, uh, if you want to say that the way I would say it is it's performing less, um, by 35% of what it's designed to do. So therefore it's age, the magnetron inside the microwaves having issues. Um, so I thought maybe that was the issue and then until I hit the disposal. If you remember my video five years ago uh, from Centennial, which I've had a ton of hits on, like 220,000 hits in five years, uh, uh, lights flickering. Boy, guys, that can mean a light bulb, a switch, a socket, a lamp, a breaker, a, uh, a dimmer, the wrong light bulb, um, loose wires in the panel, loose neutral, melted neutral, um, things hooked up incorrectly, three-way, four-way dying, or something worse like this today with the house going out. So I came to the panel, I took my voltmeter, guys, not just my light bulb, and I put my voltmeter on here, and I got 244, which is fine, and then I indicated about 118 to 127. And then as I watched it, I ended up down to like 112 to 130. The minute I hit the disposal, it swapped and I had 138 volts to probably 112. Then I turned off the disposal at 8 amps, turned on the microwave at 12 amps, and I went to 144 to 104. I knew right then and there I got to look in the panel. Well, this is only a 19 year old home. This is the only panel in the house. I checked my looseness of my lugs, I tested my voltage, and I'm like, ah, it's not the breaker. It's in the neutral of the feeder. So the next thing I did is I went out to that meter. Now we're in Colorado in Millican, and by the way, this is REA utility, so they expect the customer to take care of the main breaker and the wire this way. Though it was put in by a contractor, and that meter was put in by them, they now own the responsibility of the wire. So I did that um, two days ago. I came back today and did a test. Um, some of the testing your boss may not let you do. Some of the things that you see you may not conventionally think it's correct way to do it. Um, I don't really care. Um, bottom line is this is how I do my testing. Um, I took just a simple number six THW and dash two copper wire. Okay. I ran it through, I know that's not the best way. It'll shut tonight, this is for the neutral. So all I did is I hooked it up to my neutral. I just wanna see if I can help support this. I ran it all the way out over there to my neutral there, and I was able to indicate that my voltage started to correct because I went back into the exact same thing and it was better. So I choose to test this way and to get them by because he told me over the last two days that his furnace was acting up. The garage door, garage door opener was going brah, and then your microwave was going wah, and the light bulbs were starting to pop because they're incandescent. Uh, and the next thing you know here, the lights are dimming on other parts. Now, why it's irregular in the bus bars? Because probably the disposal is going to be on the right side of the panel, possibly on an even number, and definitely I know the microwave is on circuit 15, an odd number. So it was opposite phases. So it was definitely making the voltage irregular. I told them keep everything at a very minimal for two days till I could get out here and only use the furnace and the refrigerator and a lamp if they could. Keep the TV off. Otherwise, we usually when I see these at 155 to 160 volts and the other side is at 90 volts, then it blows out. Well, I had REA come out here and I'll show you why. Now this is a, this is a 50 kVA transformer feeding quite a few houses here. If you can see that right there is a meter there. That's coming off of this bad boy here too. And I thought the meter might go to his house there, but it doesn't. It hits that, hits that brown house. His meter is here back to back. There's another meter on this side. Okay, So they look the same. They channel up with the power. Here's your meter. Here's your main disconnect. 
again, if you are a homeowner or a handyman, I am not giving you indications on how to do this. Do not Google me, Yelp me, talk to me, any, any way, please. This stuff should be done only by a professional who's been trained in the field um, because it's, it is a safety thing. Because when you start losing a neutral and you get in, in involved in it, interrupted in it, you might become part of that neutral and current will kill you quick. So anyways, th so this right here became energized in a way. It was equal potential with its own ground rod because the utility, but you know what happened is I opened up this cover and there was no neutral wire from here to the lug in the center of this meter. So REA came out, they couldn't believe it. They went in there and 19 years, I mean, they haven't had an, a, a 14 inch number two watt aluminum in there and with deox. So they went ahead and put that in and I thought, hey, we're good to go. I go in there as they're wrapping this up and guess what? It got worse. The lights were starting to pop. So whatever happened here cleaning this neutral up, it blew. And the REA guy, uh, the utility guy says, well, how do you think it's been having a neutral? Well, this is how I think. In the back right back here, it's got our threaded 1032 screws to hold the neutral bar. And that's what was holding it through because this is bonded and the neutral to the transformer comes here in the secondary and the transformer is bonded also with a ground rod. So basically they had a really good ground and also the transformer was very close to here. It's probably why it was not indicated. But the minute we put the neutral in and they got that corrected, I then had an issue. I turn this breaker off. I make sure I turn off the power in the house first and all the circuits so I don't shunt it. So I turned it off and guess what? This thing wouldn't reset. So when he was out here and pulled the meter, I pulled the breaker out, I took it upside down, I pumped it, used a couple of my secret ways of doing it, a couple fluids, that's all I'll say. Put it back in and I got it bolted back in and boom, it popped, it went. I didn't want to try to replace some old mill bank breaker. I've seen Zinsco's that look like that. I've seen Cutler Hammer. This is a mill bank. I can get them, but they're really hard to get, especially when the house is off and it's December, right uh, two weeks away from Christmas. Pretty difficult to do. Anyway, so we got it back on, we got it running. Then the next challenge was, what happened? Well, I own a couple of good meters, and um, I know a lot of you guys don't think I have meters. I've got meters up the Yazoo, very expensive ones too, by the way. I just like testing with my light bulb because it tells me a lot, and I guess if you don't do that, you don't do it. I test a lot of things hot. I don't turn my circuits off always. I feel like I learn more when I test it hot. Well, I own a PE2003. Okay, it's an A-frame uh, design. You turn it on, it has a sensitivity. You gotta figure out how to ground that. You pulse it, you gotta charge it. And when I do, it's gonna send a pulse through to find it. Now, you can hook this up. You know, if you're hooking this up, please beware, you guys, you electricians. It does state high voltage. Do not touch them without gloves. Do not put them together. This is not a battery in a car when you're trying to deep cycle an RV battery and you get a spark. This could really hurt you. Um, this thing works wicked when it rains very, very well, or there's moisture in the ground. But in July and our ground is hard here in Colorado, not 